What's going on everybody? So I've talked about intro workouts on my stories a bunch of times. So I'm gonna make an actual video breaking it down in detail why this is the optimal approach of what you should be consuming while you're working out. Whether your goals are just putting on a little bit of more muscle in the gym, especially if you are a bodybuilder. And I see a lot of power lifters out there doing things like eating gummy worms and snacks while they're working out, trying to improve glycogen stores. That is a garbage way to go about it. And I'm here to show you a better way to do things. So we're gonna start here. So I have 32 ounces of water and I have a gram scale. Now you may know these may be infamous because drug dealers love them, but so do bodybuilders. So what I'm doing with this is it's a very, very precise scale and I'm doing that because I'm measuring out very small gram amounts of what I'm about to put in. By the way, just throwing this out there, I am not sponsored by bulk supplements, but again, I'll say it like I always do, I sure as hell wish I was. So this is the affordable way of how I get these raw ingredients for me to make my intro workouts. So what I'm doing here is I'm going to start by putting some taurine in here. All right, I thought we'd so, get a little up close and personal when we're talking about this. So I'm gonna start by putting four grams of taurine in my intro workout. Now the reason for that is taurine increases cardiovascular function. It also decreases oxidative stress. Now muscle contraction, it's caused by release of calcium into the sarcoplastic reticulum, which isn't really important if you're just uh, trying to go to the gym. And But but for nerd purposes, uh, that's what it does. Taurine increases this calcium storing ability. Now it also increases sensitivity uh, force generating proteins, which are actin and myosin, which um, those are the things that, that uh, those are the proteins that are released when you're doing a simple muscle contraction. It increases that sensitivity of force generating proteins to calcium. Thus, it's increasing your muscle force. That's where it becomes important. Now, the other big key factor is that it's increasing vasodilation. So when you take pre-workouts and caffeine, it's actually causing vasoconstriction, which you do not want. What that's, what that's actually doing is it's constricting the blood vessel walls and it's not letting them expand to their full potential. So vasodilation would be the opposite. It's allowing the blood, the blood vessel walls to expand with blood. This is important. This is how you feel a pump. This is, how, this is what you wanna do. You're trying to engorge the muscle tissue with blood and by doing that, you're creating the optimal damage that you need to for your muscles to repair bigger, stronger, and better. So vasodilation is a huge component of intra workouts. You should try and consume uh, substances that are allowing you to be able to maximize your ability to, to create blood flow and sustain it within your muscle tissue. Now, there's also a slight decrease in blood pressure with it, but that's just a, a modest decrease. Now, taurine is also great for, present, for, for preventing muscle cramps, which is very important. You may have these, I get them especially in my ab abdominals when I train abs. So that's, it's been a miracle substance for me in all of these ways. All right, I am playing with camera angles today, baby. So I got my taurine right here, loading up my scale, and I'm, I like using a spoon for it, uh, just fucking simple. So I'm just trying to measure out four grams. Now, you're rarely gonna get it right on the dot, but the important part is you're getting as close to the button as possible. See, 4.10, perfect, good enough for me. <laughs> hey, everyone, we're putting my favorite thing in the intro workout next, which is citrulline, uh, five grams to be precise. So citrulline is great for circulation, increased blood flow, and basically what it's doing is inc it's increasing nitric oxide metabolism and synthesis throughout your body. And all that really means it's uh, increasing your ability for blood flow and vasodilation. Uh, it's also increasing uh, muscle contraction, contractile force. So there's also limited effort evidence with citrulline that it has an ability to decrease your rate of perceived exertion, which is a good thing. It decreases muscle soreness, ups your power output, and there's limited evidence that it increases your total reps performed. It also has a decrease, uh, a mild decrease in blood pressure, and it's increasing your nitric oxide production. So basically nitric oxide, it's increasing your vasodilation, it's increasing your mitochondrial respiration, it's increasing your calcium handling, which we just went over before with the taurine for why that's important. It's increasing your glucose uptake, which is huge for glycogen, and we're gonna get into that later when we actually put carb powder in here. So all of that ends up equaling an uh, improvement in cardiovascular health, muscle function, and reduces fatigue. Now that is personally why I love citrulline the most in this stack. Uh, it also has mild uh, help with erectile dysfunction. A, so men out there, put some citrulline in your intro workout. So we're gonna put five grams of that. Ah, fucking with the camera angles again. Oh, okay. I don't know where my spoon went, everyone. No, for real, I don't know where my spoon went, everyone. Oh, shit. What the fuck did I just do with it? 
and everyone, we are about to put our next thing in there, which is glutamine, uh, a pretty simple amino acid. It's actually the most abundant one in your blood serum in your body. So it also ends up affecting that nitric oxide balance, which we just went over uh, by reducing protein depletion, which is very important. So it's muscle sparing, which is essentially what we're trying to do. We're trying to increase our workout performance, decrease the amount of breakdown, but we're also trying to actively repair while we're working out. That way we're getting, we're hitting three levels of things that we want to accomplish to make sure that we are ending uh, up in a state where we're able to push our bodies to its absolute limit. So that glutamine I just said, so what it also does is it reduces C-reactive protein and that is very important. So C-reactive protein uh, in your body uh, in excessive amounts is actually a driver of unwanted inflammation. It's produced by your liver as a response to inflammation. So unwanted high levels of C-reactive protein, they're linked to cardiovascular disease and heart attack. Not saying that that's something that's going to happen if you don't take this. I'm just saying it's uh, health conscious and it, ends up, it has multifaceted benefits for you by putting it in there. So it also, you know, by as a byproduct of all this, it's increasing your heart health, heart health indirectly which is really important here. We're going to put five grams of that in our intra workout, bringing our total tally up to 14 grams of amino acid so far. All right, everyone. So we are now putting five grams of glutamine in here. Okay. Let's get the camera angle over here a little bit. Oh, look at that. <laughs> okay. So we're right on the button with it. All right. Now, our next thing we're about to go over is the thing we've all heard about. We all make memes about it and people don't really know how it works. <laughs> That's right, everyone. Creatine. Are you on creatine? I'm on creatine. We all heard the memes. Don't take creatine. Actually, you should because I sure do. And I think it should go in everyone's intra workout. Now, let me tell you why. It's the most researched substance out of all of them in terms of athletic performance. So it increases strength and power output, which is very well studied. Uh, as a, as a, a result of that, it increases lean muscle mass and strength. So there's even limited evidence that it decreases mental fatigue and uh, bouts of extreme stress, which you, if you're working out hard enough, which I hope you are, you should feel pretty mentally burnt out by the end because it takes all this, an extreme amount of concentration to be able to focus on the concentric, eccentric, and just loading faces and doing everything else with your waist you're trying to, especially with isolations such as bicep curls, tricep extensions, barbell rows, bench press, overhead press, deadlifts, squats, things like that. Okay. So, uh, the main thing that it's going, that creatine does is it's going to mess with ATP. Now ATP, it carries energy within the cells to, uh, for release. So when ATP gets, uh, broken down, it ends up turning into ADP. ATP is uh, adenosine triphosphate. ADP is forming a phosphate group. So it's adenosine diphosphate meaning two. So creatine, it exists in the cells already as creatine phosphate. It's actually found in a lot of red meats, but not at the levels of concentration where it's actually going to be beneficial for you for athletic supplementation. So this creatine phosphate there, it ends up donating a phosphate group to the ADP and by t and in turn, it's the ADP is recycled into ATP. Now that's really important here because what you're doing is you're creating more available energy faster for yourself. That's where the key thing comes into play with creatine. It's increasing, one more time for everyone in the back, it's increasing the available energy for you and backfilling it for more available energy sooner. That's the main thing it's doing. By increasing the overall pool of cellular phosphocreatine, creatine supplementation, it's accelerating the turnover rate between ADP to ATP. Thereby, it's making more energy available for you for high intensity exercise. All of this creates an environment where increased energy stores are available for you to promote improvements in strength and power output. And that's the main thing for why creatine is the most amazing supplement that is natural, is legal, and you should be taking. All right, everyone. So now I'm adding five grams of creatine into this intra workout, which if you're taking five grams consistently day by day, that's enough over about a four week period to fully saturate your body with creatine. 
Um, some people believe in loading phases. I don't like to do that because what it does is it creates gastrointestinal distress and it can create nausea and diarrhea and things like that. But just on that first part, if you care about bodybuilding, the last thing you want to do is fuck up your digestion. That's why we eat easily digestible foods in high volumes because we need to, we need a very fast turnover rate in our stomach to be able to get down more food that promotes muscle gain. So I'm going to put five grams of that in here. And then we're going to move on to the less exciting things, but equally important last two parts of our intro workout. All right, everyone, we are almost to the home stretch. We're going to move our last two substances that we are putting in to this intro workout shake. Now we're going to go over EAAs or essential amino acids. So all you need to know about EAAs is that there's nine of them that they need to be given to the body through external sources, which means your diet. There are other amino acids in your body. I'm not entirely sure off the top of my head how, how many other ones are there. I believe it's 10 or 11. But anyway, with the essential ones, they need to be consumed via your diet. Now, the important part here is the three main ones that you're, that, uh, you're really banking uh, for your buck on would be uh, uh, valine, Isoleucine, but your biggest one of all is leucine. Leucine is the amino acid that is the primary driver of muscle protein synthesis. It is also the only amino acid that is found primary, uh, maybe not the only one, I'm sorry, don't quote me on that. It is the amino acid that is found primarily in animal meat. And when you think about it, you're consuming animal tissue and animal products to create more tissue on yourself. So, what the leucine is doing is driving that muscle protein synthesis, allowing the building blocks of your muscles to grow back bigger, thicker, stronger, better. And that's why we're taking this during our intro workout, because what we're trying to do here is we're trying to not only limit the breakdown, increase the performance, make sure we're getting adequate blood flow, but we're also trying to actively repair damage as it's being done. And that is where the EAAs come into fruition and why it is essential. A lot of bodybuilders also like to consume these while they're doing their fasted cardio in the morning. I don't find it entirely necessary if you're consuming enough meat throughout your diet, which you should be, but for intro workout purposes where you're actually breaking down muscle tissue actively it is very important to supplement this in your dot in your in your intro workout uh uh shake so i'm actually going to put 15 grams of that in there by the way everything that's been put into this shake so far is that clinical doses that's why we're doing this so i'm going to put 15 grams of that in there and then we're at the home stretch where the only thing we have left to put in there is going to be uh, 30 grams of carb powder, actually HBCD to be precise, like highly branched cyclic dextrin. So let's get to it. All right, we're fucking putting it on now. Come on, we are, we are getting it there. Sorry for swearing if any kids are watching. Boom, 15 grams, all right. We're going to the home stretch now. One more base to go and we are ready to go to the gym. All right, we are almost there. Our last thing we're gonna put in there is carb powder. Actually, HBCD to be precise, which is highly branched cyclic dextrin. So the only thing you really need to know about that is it's it's uh, very fast digestible uh, carb powder, which is uh, primarily glucose driven, which is gonna uh, go into glycogen in your muscle cells. So your glycogen is getting depleted as you work out. What you need to know about glycogen is that it's the metabolic fuel for muscles it uh it breaks down into glucose molecules which are then oxidized and turned into uh, uh, i'm sorry it's oxidized through an uh, anaerobic and aerobic processes which are then uh turned over into atp which we just went over with the creatine so as you can see all these things go full circle with each other so the carb powder we're putting in there, it's fast digestible. We're gonna consume it while we work out because we're gonna, that, that energy we're, we're uh, exerting while we're lifting weights, that's getting burned up pretty quick. And you're actually replenishing those stores and what you're doing primarily with this component of your intro workout is you're, cr is you're creating an environment where you have more energy to give throughout your workout. You see that, you see I'm doing with my hand right there? <laughs> more energy to give. That's what we're all about here. So we're gonna put 30 grams of that, then we're gonna mix it all up. And what you can see here, is that all of this is going to contribute to an optimal environment within our training for us to reap the most benefits out of that training that we're doing. So when, so in conclusion, when we go through all of this, you're going to see, I'm going to throw some carb powder in there. We're going to have four grams of taurine. We're going to have five grams of citrulline. We're going to have five grams of glucose. We're going to have five grams of creatine. We're going to have 15 grams of, of EAAs 
And then at the cherry on top, we're gonna have 30 grams of carb powder on there, which is a dose that I highly recommend because it's not gonna cause any stress on your stomach. Usually when you find people that do higher doses of carb powder where they try 50 grams of carbs, 60 grams of carbs, they end up creating distress in their stomach, which ends up making them, them throw up a lot of the time. And why would you want to throw up everything that you're now putting in yourself to reap benefits out of? That's what it's doing. We're getting a fast turnover within our body consuming all these things. And then at the very end, and then at the very end of our workout, we've already created an environment where we're healing uh, optimally. We just got the most out of our training. Our blood flow is on point. And then we get to go home, consume our protein and go about our meals. So you see the intro workout is actually one of the most important components of your tr of your training environment. So I hope everyone learned something from this video. <laughs> I'm really happy I got to share that with you and I want everyone out there to stay strong do your best and remember bust your fucking ass